Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, Sean, I can hear you. Sorry um, about that. I don't know what that was, but uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you got it, buddy. Uh, again, uh, Sean Stapleton, I'm honored and humbled to be here and uh, have the opportunity to speak to you, so I really appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out of your day. My presentation is The New Road to the Sale, Talking Technology and Tactics to Today's Shopper. What was your shopper like in 2000? The shopper in 2000 relied on mass media. The shopper may have used television, radio, newspapers to research and shop for cars. The 2008 shopper, the 2008 shopper might have been at home browsing from the desktop, calling different dealerships, many dealerships. The Internet, though, has forever changed the way we do business. It really started to affect how we do business, how we gather information, how we communicate, and how we buy. What's your shopper look like in 2016? Today's shopper has changed. The 2016 shopper is digitally driven and mobile. Virtually all their research and shopping is done online before they ever make it to your lot. There are plenty of examples I could give to show how your shoppers have changed, but I think Bobby Heron with Garber Automotive, one of our rock star dealers, said it best. We had this young girl come in. It was her first car experience. She got one of our veteran salespeople. He was amazing. He started with his 10-step sales process, but she wasn't having it. Maybe this would have worked in 2000, but it wouldn't work today. Why? Why wasn't the young girl having this tried and true sales pitch from the veteran salesperson? Because the way people shop for cars has changed and continues to change and will continue to change even more in the future. Today is much, much different, and here are some of the stats to prove this point. Today's shopper, for example, 70% have decided on a make and model prior to their initial dealer visit. Okay, what does that mean? That means our marketing must also change. That means that your sales process must change to support this change in shopping behavior. Today's shopper only visits 1.4 dealerships before purchasing a car. What does that really mean? Only 1.4 dealerships before they purchase a car. That means today's modern shopper has already done their shopping before they're coming to your brick and mortar. The shopping is done online. When they're coming to your store, it's a different approach. What did I mean by this? When a shopper comes to your store, they're coming to buy. Let me say it again. Shoppers are not coming to shop. Shoppers are coming to buy. That means all of your sales processes must be tailored to make that purchase as seamless as fast, and painless as possible. That also means that the road to the sale has forever changed. What it really means is maybe seven out of the 12 steps or 10 steps were done before they ever decided to come to your brick and mortar. Now let me ask you a question. Are you ready for the modern shopper? Have your sales processes changed? I hope they have. The old road to the sale, let's start with that. The old road to the sale, meet and greet, guest sheet, vehicle selection, demo and test drive, trade-in, service walk, four square, negotiate, manager TO, close and deliver, follow up. Guess what? Today, one size does not fit all. The same steps for every sale does not work. Treating everyone the same is a bad idea. Fire up the balloons. Fire up the popcorn machine. Break out the inflatable animals. I'm sorry, but most of these tactics should have left your dealership years ago. The old road to the sale. The old road to the sale was established on your lot. You started this 10-step process. Heck, this, the 10-step process may have been even 11 or 12 steps. Maybe that's why I didn't understand it the whole time, right? But guess what? The lot is most likely your website now. The old road to the sale was consistent. It started with a meet and greet, long conversations, many questions. It took a long time. It was predictable. The same old sales tactics. Hey, what's the best number to reach you at so I can call you back with more information? Remember that line? Well, just come on in and we'll take a look at this stuff together. Let me check the window sticker and get back to you. Are you crazy? 
If you let a modern customer go today without answering all their questions, you may never hear from them again. It's the age of the customer. They are in charge. Be there to serve them, not sell them. Again, be there to serve them, not sell them. Help create a new, differentiated experience, one that puts the customer in the driver's seat. The old road to the sale was a one-size-fits-all. Same steps to every sale. Think about a modern customer like a snowflake. No two are exactly the same. So don't try to treat them all the same way. The old road to the sale is dead. So I think we can all agree if the old road to the sale is dead and it's no longer relevant to the modern customer, then let's move on. Fair? The road to the sale is changing. The road to the sale is changing. Why? Because the shopper has changed. The old sales tactics and strategy are obsolete. Technology has advanced to a point where it's creating considerable competitive advantage. Technology is driving the conversion and the sale. Remember, shoppers aren't coming to browse. They're coming to buy. The new road to the sale is online. The new road to the sale is dynamic. The new road to the sale is paved by shoppers. The new road to the sale is unique for every shopper. The five new rules of the road. But first, let's start with the most important rule. Make it easy to be found and make it easy to buy. How do you do this? Rule number one. You have to win the shopper online. Your website is your virtual showroom. Is it set up to perform? Is it easy to navigate? Does it have a lot of odd pop-ups that just randomly appear? Let me ask you, how's your click appeal? You must ensure an amazing user experience. Today's shoppers spend 75% of their time shopping online. They use social media to connect with other shoppers and do some research. They gather important data clues. Hey, a really good buddy of mine, Kevin Fry from Weiler Automotive, said a couple years ago something very controversial. He said, I'd rather have an Internet lead than a walk-in. I said, why is that, Kevin? He said, I can create better customer profiling so I can serve their needs better. That was pretty amazing to be said back then. And it's true today. Today, you got to focus on SEO to ensure you're being found. you got to build content. you got to build links. you got to build relationships. you got to fix those website bugs. All of these things can lead to a poor customer experience without you even knowing it. Email marketing, banner ads, marketing automation tools, social media, all of these things has to support the online shopper then listen and serve the customer. Be responsive to their needs. If you're not catching the shoppers when they're starting their search online, you've probably lost the opportunity to serve them later. The issue here is that many of us don't even know how well we are performing at the stage, and it could easily be very, very costly for you. Remember, your website must be mobile-friendly and must support the modern customer. This is not an option anymore. Back in April, Google introduced and uses the mobile friendliness as a ranking signal. This change has affected mobile searches in all languages worldwide. It had a significant impact in our search results. Consequently, users found it easier to find and get relevant, high-quality search results that are optimized for their devices. Is this a significant impact? Heck yeah. What does it mean for you exactly? In short, if your website's not mobile friendly, meaning your site's not responsive to different screen sizes, properly configured, and able to be viewed on multiple device types, Google is making plans to penalize your search rankings. All of the valuable SEO your site has currently could be for not if your site isn't viewable on a mobile device. The reason for this update is simple. As the world moves to mobile and more and more of our lives incur 
on a handheld device, it is critical that websites are able to keep up. And by rewarding those sites which are mobile friendly, Google is continuing to shape the digital landscape and ultimately your business. Remember, 40% of the time spent on the Internet is from a mobile device, and that's doing nothing but increasing significantly. Shoppers are online. Shoppers are using multiple devices, so make sure your website is respons responsive for smartphones, tablets, etc. Customers today can reach you from anywhere. Your goal is to deliver a personalized, satisfying experience that they will remember. Make it easy for them to move from one channel or one device to another while maintaining the conversation. Give your shoppers the information they need before they even need it. Be proactive. Rule number two, it's not how you want to sell, it's how they want to buy. In other words, know what shoppers want before they ever step foot in your dealership. Don't make your shoppers repeat actions they've already done or preferences they've already communicated. The customer data should drive the on-the-lot on the experience, not start here. Do you know what your shopper prefers? Are you tracking the customer's preferred method of communication, for example? Are you using the data they're giving you and you already have about your shoppers? You should be. Are you completing a customer profile and creating a holistic view of the customer? If not, you should be. Why? Very simple. The more personal, the better. Create customer intimacy. Yeah, create customer intimacy. What are their communication preferences? Do they like email or calls or texting? What browser are they using to shop from? What devices are they responding from? What time of the day are they responding? What's not working? You need to know this stuff. You want to know? Just ask. The major takeaway here is this, though. If the customer takes the time to tell you how they want to personalize their buying experience, you must follow the rules or they will find someone else that will. You need to use the personalized suggestions they're giving you. Knowing your modern shopper requires deep data insights. I hope you track their entire purchase journey through your website. We see things today like special VIP phone numbers, new websites that personalize the experience, that adjust the content to the customer's needs, and new modern approaches are being applied everywhere. You must proactively maintain a clean database. To do this, that allows you to arm your employees with the right information to engage your customers. This is a top priority. Your data is one of your most valuable assets, but it's only as good as you maintain it. So keep it clean. If you maintain your data, you can deliver a consistent content that matches your shopper's needs. You can deliver a personalized experience for each and every customer, and that's your competitive advantage. Let me repeat that again. You can deliver a personalized experience for each and every shopper. That's your competitive advantage. It's not just about the content, but it's about the customer experience. The customer experience they'll remember. Be customer-centric. Rule number three, don't ask, show and tell. When shoppers arrive at your dealership, it's time to show them that you've listened. Prove you have what they want. I like to say preparation is segmentation here. Have you seen the dealership that pulls up the cars in advance of the customer arriving? Have you seen the dealership that sets the radio stations to the customer's favorite station? Have you seen the dealers that's using this data to truly understand the customer's hot buttons? Something like performance. So they'll take the curvy back road test drive route, not the normal test drive route, because performance is a big part of this person's decision. Know what make, model, and color, and features that are important to them. Understand their budget needs and limitations. Understand any and all online incentives or incentives available to them before you meet them. Expect they will know this information. 
Expect that if you don't, it's not going to be a pleasurable experience. Make sure to look at all of the communications that have occurred before they arrive at your dealership. Make it about them and the experience, not just the content or the standard plan of needs evaluation. Remember, this customer may have been way, way past that part and really just wants to finalize a deal and get home to the family with their new ride. Again, make sure you don't create or make sure you don't require them to repeat the experiences the shoppers have already gone through. Remember, today's modern shoppers are doing 17 to 19 hours of research before they ever step foot on your lot. Make sure you're honoring that and respecting that. So don't make them repeat many of the decisions they've already made online. That drives many of these shoppers crazy. Repeating themselves is not a fun experience. Don't slow the sales process down. Don't take them back through the 10 or 12 step process they've already completed. Heck, maybe one through seven was completed online. Remember, one of the biggest complaints of a modern shopper today is that it takes too long to buy a car. Show them that you care. Show them that you've listened. Show them that they're being heard. Again, the more personal, the better. Rule number four, shoppers control the road. Think of the shopper as the GPS for your sale. They'll tell you which way they want to go. Shoppers have the ability to navigate the sale, not you. They may skip some of your sales processes you're traditionally used to. That's okay. The shopper is in control. They get to pick the speed. They get to pick the path. They get to pick what they want to buy. You must be listening to engage. Dealers can no longer pick the shortest or easiest route or the route that's easiest or traditionally built for them. Empower your employees to engage. Have a streamlined sales and marketing process that's not disjointed. Make sure everything is synergistic and supports the customer needs. We've all heard of the customer that gets the offer in the mail two days or three days after they just bought a car for X number of dollars off. That doesn't make them feel good. That's a disjointed approach. Use technology to follow and understand each of your shoppers' roads. Remember, the modern customer is like a snowflake. There are no two the same. Empower your customers to take their own road to the sale. It allows them to build their experience, and it will be very meaningful to them. The old days, they used to say, you were born with two ears and one mouth, so use them in that order. But with today's modern technology, you might have three ears, with the third ear being the technology ear. I recently had a conversation with a good friend of mine named Joe Webb, and we were talking about the advancement of technology and how it's creating significant competitive advantage. Today, many new features exist for you to be able to listen and hear and understand your customers even better. That allows you to engage better. These things are like cookies, super cookies, VIN lens, target segmentation tools, etc. Today, businesses have great practices around customer communication tools. You have advanced email and social media tools. You have relevant click and respond marketing. You have easy and great calls to action. You have fantastic analytics. The question I have for you is, are you looking at the analytics to make the changes if you see things that aren't performing as well for you? Or are you just sitting back and wondering why your showroom traffic is slowing? Because remember, they're only going to 1.4% of the dealerships. And ultimately, they're really only trying to go to one. Maybe the 04 is the dealership that's not serving their needs. Today, we have amazing technology tools to make these practices easy and efficient for your business and ultimately a better overall customer experience. Use them to understand your customer better. Remember, the shoppers control the road to the sale. Rule number five, all roads are unique. Each, each road to the sale is different. 
That means everything must be personalized to each shopper and their preferences, not yours. I see this all the time in dealerships. They're conforming back to the way they want to sell cars, not the way the modern customer wants to buy it. The new shopper controls their unique road to the sale. In other words, the shoppers are in control. Remember back in the day that we always used to say, make sure you're in control? It's the opposite today. Many shoppers equal many messages. It's not one size fits all. Again, this is considered a snowflake sales approach. No two are alike. Your job is to lay the digital groundwork to drive shoppers in the right direction, but allow them to steer. Your job is to use technology to find out what their road is and use it. You must be listening to properly engage. You must be looking at your modern technology to truly understand if you're getting the engagement. Let me ask you, what types of tool sets are you having at your fingertips today? What types of tool sets are you using today? How old are they? Are you using modern tool sets that allows you to cater to your modern shopper? If not, you should be. If not, you're losing opportunity. If not, you're losing market share. Things like special phone numbers, portal pages, dynamic portal pages that change based on who's logging in, VIP programs, VIP phone numbers, even special shopping times are all new sales tactics that are being used today. All of these things are changing the game. Let me ask you. Has anybody bought a car on Facebook before? I did. I personally bought my last pickup truck, my F-150, 100% using social media. I used Facebook and my friends as my search engine, and they put me into contact with a dealer that met my needs and allowed me to buy the vehicle the way I wanted to. I didn't want to test drive. I didn't want financing options. I didn't even want to hear about your extra special programs. I just wanted to get the vehicle. I wanted to confirm the price, how they were going to ship it to me, and how soon I could get it in my driveway. I did it all via social media. I expect things like these and other things to really change even faster, to create even more personalized experiences, Look at some of the big publics out there, changing their sales tactics, trying new things, coming to your house to evaluate what your trade is worth, offering to buy your car back if you didn't do a trade, changing the way the modern customer experiences the buying process. I can tell you I recently had the opportunity to buy a car for my 16-year-old daughter. The dealer brought the car to me. The dealer allowed me to drive the car in my driveway. The dealer had my daughter and I use the car for a while. When we were done, we called the dealer and either filled out the paperwork or we left the keys in there and said, come pick up the car. It was a fantastic experience, and it created an experience that was uniquely designed based on my needs, my wants, the way I wanted to buy the car. So use new sales tactics to steer them towards the sale. Ask shoppers for on-the-spot feedback about their experience. But remember, remember this. If you ask them, you have to use it. If you ask them how they want a personalized experience and you ignore it, it's rude. They'll find someone else that will serve them that way. Deliver the experience the way they want not what's just easiest for you. Train all of the dealership departments on the new road to the sale that today's modern customer is like a snowflake. No two might be the same. You must maximize the relationship by having sales and marketing work together. You must maximize the relationship by having all the profit centers of a dealership work in harmony. If you have a synergistic approach, All roads will lead to the sale and create a customer experience that's different, customer-friendly, and most importantly, personalized. 
So what do I mean by this? It's time to evolve. If some of the things I've been talking about to you are being put in place today in your dealership, I say great job. If this sounds very foreign to you, you've got some catching up to do. Quickly, it's time to evolve or dissolve. So a quick recap of the major takeaways from today are very simple. Do you still have a road to the sale, but it's online? You still have your road to the sale, but it's different. It has many, many different endings. It's almost limitless. Your website is truly the virtual showroom. Make sure your online merchandising is hitting the mark and keep it fresh. Be mobile. Be everywhere. Always be on. Stop driving it your way. Let the shopper steer. I know that sounds odd because we've all been trained for years to stay in control of the sale. But let me promise you, that's not how the modern shopper wants it today. They're empowered. They have choices. They're educated. Heck, many times the modern shopper knows more about what they're buying than some of our inexperienced salespeople. Remember, one through seven of the 10-step sales process may have already been completed online. Don't make them start over. Don't ask them to reevaluate the decisions they've already made. Use your holistic customer profile to proactively engage your shoppers. Use the data and technology to adjust the road to the sale for your shoppers and do it regularly. Do it often. To engage the modern shopper, you must rely on segmentation. Remember, convert from broadcast to personalization and listen to engage. Make sure you arm your employees with the right information to engage, to make the sale. Remember, make it easy to be found. Listen and serve your customers. Because in the end, that's all they're really asking for. So, the better you understand the customer journey, the more successful and the more loyal your customers will be to you. I hope that you understand some of the information I'm explaining. I hope you found this to be very valuable. I hope you use some of these tactics to change your sales experience because the modern customer is different and the old ways are now obsolete. The old road to the sale is dead. If you really like what I've been saying today, I'll ask you, please, I'd love to hear from you. Just give me a call. Shoot me an email. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me with a text. Brian, how'd that go? I think that, you know what, the presentation was wonderful. I did, I, my, my internet went out for a portion of this, and so some of the slides, the slide deck may not have advanced right. So I want to let everybody know that I will be sending everyone on this, on this webinar right now, as soon as we're finished, I'll, I will send you the slide deck. And then, and then I was able to record the entire audio, and so I will correct, I will correct anything that was wrong with the, with the uh, video, and I will have the, the perfect one out to everybody. But the, Sean, the, the audio was absolutely phenomenal. I was so, I'm so thankful that, that you took the time to share this with our listeners today. Everybody else, I apologize. Comcast got me today. And so I, my, I, I believe that, that most of you did not see every slide in, in the right format. So I will, I, will, I will take care of that issue right now. Um, I want to invite Hannah to our model success. She's the young lady who was doing the countdown at the beginning. She's got a few questions that we received uh, for Sean. And then, and then, Sean, when we're done with that, I, I also want to let anybody know, I did notice a couple of questions come in that were been specific questions from some of your customers. Uh, my name is Brian Ankney. My direct email address is brian with an I at autosuccessonline.com. Just in case, I, I, I will deliver all those questions to Sean, but just in case, if you wouldn't mind, just because we had a little technical hiccup, I just want to make sure that none of those get lost. And so please send, send them to me again. Um, Hannah, would you like to go ahead and ask, ask some questions of Sean? Hannah? Well, I guess I'm going to have Hannah. I, I, I have the question as well. Sean, what, what are the biggest challenges dealers will face in changing their current sales process? The biggest challenge is, is being open to change. The biggest challenge is that we defer back to how we used to sell cars. We think because it used to work, it's going to still work in the future. I'll go ahead and prove my point with just one example. Pick up a Sunday paper. Look at the paper. It used to be the thickest part. It used to be the car dealer ads, right? Now when I look at a paper or pick up a paper, the ads are significantly less. That's because the modern customer has changed. 
They're looking at things online. They're looking for more personalization. They have better ways to collect, find, research their data. Okay. Uh, Sean, how can, how can dealers get buy-in from their executives and their teams on, you know, reinventing the road to the sale? That's a great question, Brian. I, I recommend some testing. I recommend trying some of this. I recommend asking the customer open and honestly. This is how we're trying to understand how to serve you better. Could you give me examples of what we could do better? But remember, Brian, if you ask a modern customer about their personalized experiences and what they'd like to see, if you don't honor those things, it's considered rude. What I mean by that is if you're asking me to take the time to explain how I want to personalize my experience, let me give an example of me personally. I get a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails. If you want to reach Sean Stapleton, hit me with a text. I feel obligated to read every text. I bet there's a lot of people out there like me. Do you realize that I can get texts on airplanes? So I'm always connected. Do you realize that if you have something important, there's a different form of communication to use to get my attention than if you have something that's just trying to be fluffy or doesn't have a required time limit on it? But to really, really do this, you got to create some experiments. And you can always start by asking and surveying your good customers. Not only do they want to tell you, but most of the time, you've created a pleasurable experience for them, and they're looking to return the favor. All right. Sean, what are some tools and technologies you must have available to your, to your dealership and your, and your people in order to uh, accomplish this, this change in sales process? Well, a couple things, Brian. Um, First of all, I think that modern technologies that are out there give you the ability to track a customer journey in the digital world. What I mean by that is cookies and super cookies and trackable devices, being able to understand what your prospects are doing before they're even identified as a shopper, having good technology on a website, having good deep links, creating some personalizations, creating fresh and up-to-date stuff making sure you have plenty of pictures of the car that shows the car is physically on the ground. I love video. I love video because it has content, it has emotion, it has sound, it has color. It's very engaging. I like personalizing my follow-ups. I like making sure things like explaining to my customer what they should expect the sales process to be up front instead of letting the customer sit back and wonder, did I get an email? How long should it take to respond? What is a typical follow-up process? These are all examples of things that are out there. New technology is advancing at such an accelerated rate. Heck, you can use Twitter now to segment and look for people that are looking for things like a Chevy or a Ford or service. You can use Facebook and social media tools to filter down to people that are specific in specific areas of the sales funnel or looking for specific brands or looking for specific services, right? Again, one size does not fit all. And if you're a dealer today sitting back and wondering, I have one road to the sale, I have one follow-up script, I have one survey approach, you're in trouble because there is not one offer or one message that works. Sean Stapleton buys cars differently than Brian. Brian buys cars differently than someone else. The true personalization, the true content, the true thing is about creating an experience that's unique for them. Let me tell you this. At the end of the day, a year from now, a week from now, a month from now, the shopper's not going to remember the content that drove them to your website but they sure might remember the experience that caused them to buy. And that experience could be a differentiator, not only for that customer, but for that customer to be a raving fan or an advocate for how you do business as well. Okay. Sean, what what metrics should the dealer watch to know that their new process is is working and and, and as as they implement it, that, that, that it's moving forward and continuously improving? Well, first it starts with measuring. You can't understand if you're doing something right or wrong unless you have a baseline, unless you have an understanding and expectation of each steps or each process you're working with. But at the end of the day, you know, your sales funnel is still tire kickers are way at the top, right? And that's occurring online. 
The big differences that we see today between a modern customer and a customer maybe three or five years ago is where the experiences or where the interactions are taking place. Because today's shoppers or buyers are only visiting, for example, 1.4 retail facilities before they buy a car, that means many or most of the steps to the road to the sale have taken place online, in the cloud, right? They've looked at your click appeal, your curb appeal, your online merchandising to decide, do I want to do business with this person or do I not? Reputation management is critical. Being able to convey the differences of what and how you sell, buy, and serve your customers is the difference between selling a commodity and building a brand. Remember, successful brands, they stand for something different, but most successful brands are customer-centric and revolve around and change around a customer's needs. Don't forget, if today's customers are using multiple devices, attribution reporting has to change. Understand that today's customer might start with a browser on their computer at work and switch to their tablet at home and switch to their iPhone late at night to show their significant other the car they're looking at and may come back to a different device to submit a lead. Many customers today don't want to talk to you on the phone. They like the anonymity of the Internet to gather information to help make their decision. A modern customer should not be forced into your sales process. A modern salesperson should lead the process. I like to say good technology enables the sales process to fit the customer. Bad technology forces a customer to a certain road that they might not like. That's a dead-end road, and that road to the sale is changing. That has a significant impact on your bottom line. Perfect. Well, everybody, um, I appreciate everyone that took the time to join us today. I, I apologize for any hiccups you may have experienced with the, uh, with, the with my Internet breaking down, but uh, I, I, I do appreciate you coming. Sean, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to share this information with everybody today, and, and I hope – I hope that you grace us, grace our airwaves again near, in the near future with another, another one of these great presentations. Thank you, Sean. Ryan, I, I really appreciate it. I really want to say thank you to each and every person that took time out of their day to listen to me. It's, it's an honor to be able to do this, and I'm really humbled by it. And I'm really interested in your feedback. I truly am. So if you have any feedback, if you think I'm wrong or you want to challenge something or you want to, you know, reiterate the things I talked about, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. But again, Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend some time with me. I hope you learned something. Great. And I, I wanted to remind everybody, if, if you do have questions for Sean, um, you, can, you can reach him. His email address is very simple. It's Sean, S-E-A-N, dot Stapleton at binsolutions.com. And I'll, I'll, post, I'll post his information on the Auto Success webinars, and I'll include it in an email that you'll all receive after this. P please feel free to reach out to either one of us. And, and as soon as I have a recording that is uh, fit to distribute, I will send you all a recording. Thank you for coming, and I hope to see you soon at another Out of Success webinar. Thank you, and Godspeed.